Today we're going to be talking about a crazy story that happened in South Korea in 1992 where people believed that there was an end of the world coming. People were shouting, Jesus is coming, a rapture. If you don't seek for forgiveness, you're going to go to hell. People were self-harming themselves, aborting babies. And this is named one of the biggest hoaxes and fraud that has ever happened. This is kind of related to also that Heaven's Gate story where it was an American religious movement. It also goes to show you how crazy and scary herd mentality can be and how much fear can impact a lot of people and who knows maybe we are living in this fear mentality society today that also affects us without knowing it since today's story is crazy and i am in a holidays festive mood i'm gonna be drinking some wine while i talk about this because i need to be cool and relaxed for this story as someone that don't drink much when i go into the liquor store i honestly don't know what to pick because i'm not an expert but that's one of the reasons why you should try bright sellers and i want to say thank you so much to bright sellers for partnering up with me today. With Bright Cellars, you guys could try new exciting wine every single month. And no, you do not have to be a wine expert like me. And all you have to do is take a seven question quiz so that they can gather your taste preference and deliver your wine that you're guaranteed to like. They ask what kind of chocolate you like, how you like your teas, like what kind of fruit juices you like. I guess that has to do something with wine. My choices of wine came directly delivered to my house. This is one of my favorite wine that I got. It is so good. It's exactly what I want want it which is sweet it is very light each box comes with wine education cards for each bottle that outlines the tasting notes suggested pairings best serving temperatures and origins and it's one of the best things that you can bring to parties and friends and family gatherings bright sellers is giving my followers 50 percent off six bottle box that's six bottles for 53 dollars which is a crazy affordable price you guys and just by clicking the link down below you guys you're supporting my channel thank you so much to bright sellers for supporting creators and allowing me to continue creating my contents. Cheers! In 1992, there were some strange incidents that was appearing in Korea regarding the date October 28th. A woman was found to have self-harmed herself and she died. Next to her, she left a note that says, I do not want to live any farther as October 28th approaches. Another woman who was pregnant that begged her doctor to abort her baby because she cannot have a child because it was approaching October 28th. Another family who disappeared from society and just before they disappeared, they gave all their prized goods, money, I mean things that they had to their peers like family and friends. And the parents said, I don't need all of these because October 28th is coming. Some people started to spend all their life savings, sold their houses. There was even a family son that ran away from home and stopped going to school. And eventually the father had to put him into a mental facility. And it wasn't just this one son. It was a lot of family members that just ran away from home and spent all their time at a church. So what was the big deal with October 28th? What is this date and why is everybody talking about this? What, why are people killing themselves and even wanting to abort their own child for this? So there were a group of people that started to believe that the end of the world was coming and that you need to seek for rapture. I didn't know what rapture was, but supposedly it's where you seek for forgiveness and wait for the judgment day. And if you do not seek for rapture on the day that the world will end, you will pretty much go to hell and suffer for eternally. There were people on the streets sending out flyers, you know, loudspeakers. There were signs everywhere telling people to believe in Jesus and repent your sins. Now you might be wondering, well, you know, people believe what they want to. You guys have heard of these stories throughout the years, but no, this wasn't just a small group of people believing it. Over 250 churches and over 100,000 followers were being prepared to be saved. So who started all of this? There has to be someone that started this. And why the date October 28th? So the head pastor who started this was named Pastor Lee, and he was from the Tamison Church. His belief came from Nostradamus's book that he wrote 400 years ago, predicting all these different things that was going to happen on Earth. It states that in 1999, July specifically, the world will be doomed. 
So Pastor Lee says that seven years prior to the doom is 1992, which is when the rapture is going to happen. Where did he get the date October 28th? Well, the pastor says that he interpreted the Bible himself, somehow got the numbers to be October 28th. He also said that the rapture will happen exactly at midnight in South Korean time. <laughs> um, but they all believe that this rapture was going to happen globally, not just South Korea. I guess God really likes South Korea time. Pastor Lee wrote a book called Prepare for the Coming Days. And in this book, it describes in detail of what's going to happen the day of the rapture and seven years after that. In the book he wrote on October 28th, one million people around the world will disappear. They are the ones that's going to be saved. All pilots controlling planes and drivers of vehicles will evaporate and result in major crashes. And it also explained in detail that souls will evaporate and go through any walls. So it didn't matter where you were. The remaining people on earth will experience deadly virus, chaos, and hell on earth due to anti-Christians. And 5 million people will perish. You must leave behind your physical belongings. And of course, you need to repent and ask for saving every night, especially coming close to the date. So this was a whole book, you guys, that was detailed descriptions of how it was gonna happen. And not only in the book, but there were pastors in churches describing even with the sound of exactly how your soul is going to fly up. Not only that, but there were tickets to this rapture or being saved. They said that those who dreamt of raptures are guaranteed to be saved. For example, there was this one woman, she says that she was in a boat like in the middle of the sea and saw a sign that says 92 rapture date. So this was like a guaranteed ticket to her. There were even kids telling pastors at churches saying that they dreamt of things and they said, God told me he will come in 1992. Our church people, the time he's on church specifically, will all be saved. So it was now a year prior to the rapture date. I mean, people have been getting hyped up for this for years now. And in 1991, the Gulf War happened. The Gulf War was mainly between US against Iraq, and it was aired global on TV everywhere. So now that people are seeing even wars on TV, they thought that World War III was gonna happen. So the Gulf War being aired on TV, they called it the gas that really ignited this whole rapture thing. People literally started to head to the supermarkets and started panic buying food and everything that they needed. Not only that, but bookstores was going crazy because they were selling out rapture books like this. That book written by Mr. Lee became one of the top selling religious books of that time. And you would think that it's just kind of like older people believing in this, but it's not. It was a lot of people in their 20s, I mean kids, like all ages believing in this. And as you guys know, the herd mentality really fires up when there's fear. So once you see all these things in bookstores and supermarkets and TVs and churches everywhere, I mean you start to believe these things. So people who are non believers started to get worried thinking, hey, maybe this is true. The biggest trouble with Mr. Lee came when a 17 year old ran away from home. The father found out that he wasn't going to school and that he was attending this church religiously. So the father put his minor son in a mental facility. The son inside the mental facility wrote a letter to his church and the church members actually came to help him flee from the facilities. So this was now getting out of hand. Even minors were running away from home and police thought that they had to do something about this. So eventually the head pastor Lee was arrested for causing such a wreck in society. I mean in a free religion society and a country to have a pastor arrested, you know it's getting serious. Prosecutors decided to charge him for fraud. They found out that he was receiving the church donations particularly related to the rapture to his personal bank and not to the church bank. And the donations was mounted to be over three million dollars. The crazy thing is they can't actually prosecute him if the pastor believes that the end of the world was coming. There need to be an evidence that this person was really out there purposely trying to hoax people. How do you prove that someone believed or didn't believe that the end of the world was coming? But the police actually found something very interesting inside of his home. One damning evidence was that they actually found some kind of a bond inside of his home. I'm not sure exactly what this was, but it was some kind of a bond that he was supposed to receive like a big amount of money. And that due date was May of 1993, so that he knew 
knew that the world was going to continue after 1992. So after being confronted about this money collection date, which she was definitely aware that he was going to collect that paycheck on May 1993 after the world ended, he told the police that he was not preparing to leave Earth like everybody else. His excuse was that he was not going to be saved and he was a murderer, who is someone that suffers persecutions and death for advocating his beliefs. So basically, he was telling people that he was like the next Jesus, trying to save those people who was doomed for that seven years that was supposed to happen. The media asked him, do you still believe in the rapture? And he said, it will come one day. But people didn't care. They didn't care that the main head pastor was charged for fraud and that he was in jail. I mean, they still believed in this rapture date, October 28th. So now October 28th rolled around and media was swarming the church. So what was going to happen at midnight? Family, children, everybody came gathering and people even received rapture cards or tickets from the church. I need a drink. You heard me right. So if you received the ticket from the church, you were guaranteed to be saved. People started to cry, saying, I mean, ask for saving that they've been waiting for seven years. So 12 o'clock midnight of October 28th finally rolled around and nothing happened. Literally nothing happened. Families of those who were waiting for the family members who was inside the church waiting for the rapture were so angry. There were people going inside the church, literally throwing things, ripping the Bible, yelling at their kids because they've been stopping school for months now because there's no reason to go to school. And they were sort of ridiculed and humiliated. Pastor Lee was eventually sentenced to one year in prison. And on October 28th, he was actually in prison and they say that he fell asleep at 11 p.m. He changed his name after and no one knows what happened to him. Even after these stories, there were also more end of the world rapture kind of things that went on. I remember sometime in 2000s, sometime in 2000s or 2010s, I remember I was in high school and there was in America, there was also the same thing that was happening where people were telling that there was going to be end of the world happening. And it was literally supposed to happen 12 p.m. at New York time. And I was not gonna lie, I didn't believe in it, but not gonna lie. I remember exactly, I was in the car and looking at the clock at 12 o'clock because I was like, what if it actually does happen? I was kind of waiting for like the volcano or earthquakes to happen because they were saying that, you know, there was gonna be this whole earthquake happening and like fires and like things dropping and we're totally fine and we're here in 2021, now 2022, still thriving. But even when it happened in 2000s in America, I remember people were spending their life savings, selling their cars and homes and literally preparing to die. I wonder what happened to those people that sold all their life savings. Another crazy story that happened in 1987 in South Korea, which is very similar to the Heaven's Gate story. There was actually a big factory called O. Oh. They were known to make like trophies for the Olympics. So this obviously seemed like a legit business. Come to find out a strange thing happened because there was actually a lot of investors for the O company. It was a mid-aged couple that went to this factory to talk to the owners about their money. Now, when they went there, they were beaten up by these people that they didn't know who they were. And they were forced to sign a paper that gave away their investment funds. So they were forced to sign a paper that they were not gonna get their money back. They survived and they went to the police and reported it. And the police soon found out that this was not not a company or a business, but it was secretly a religious cult. When police finally got the warrant to raid this factory, there was nobody there. But looking around, they found bloody handprints, weird holes in the ceilings. And when they went up there, they found 32 bodies stacked on top of another. This company was found by a lady named O. She claims that she was diagnosed with a deadly cancer and she was only given very few moments to live. She claims that she didn't do any treatments only prayed that's when she started this foundation i'm not really sure what kind of foundation it was but there were children's that was kind of praising her i guess secretly like a cult she would somehow recruit her cult members through money she would borrow money from people but also give them interest at the right time so this is also a big scam tactic where they borrow money from you they give you the interest that you deserve never missing the payment and that's how they gained your trust until the day they stopped paying you. So she was able to gather many members into her cult and they weren't the investors. They were the people who were recruiting investors. So they were actually in 
thousands of dollars of debt. They started beating up their investors, forcing them to sign these papers that they don't have to pay back anymore. So what people think happened after that, the leader O, she made her followers believe that it was time to go to heaven and that it's time to end our lives. Somehow she was able to convince all these people and 32 of these people were people that was in the biggest debt. So the leader and all these people ended up self-harming themselves and it's crazy how all these people believe the same thing and believe in one human being. And I believe that derived from fear. It derived from the false promises and hopes that they were going to be taken to heaven. There was people who were also alive who was just hiding from the police inside the factories. And they claimed that they did not harm themselves because the leader O told them that they are not ready to receive saving. So the message that I really want to take away from this is that it's so important to ground yourself and do not be fluctuated by fear and too good to be true hopes and promises that you just don't know if it's gonna come or not and we all have our strong intuitions and we should listen to them and not always the outside world my mom also told me that she had a certain relative that also believed in these things and this person would go to churches you know tell my mom that she needs to believe in it and that you know she spent thousands of dollars you know and she was eventually scammed by a lot of different people in her life. And one common thing that I saw was that I am not shaming this relative or the people at all. This particular person was very weak when it came to their self-confidence and believing that someone else will come to give them a better life when I think it's really up to your hands. So if let me know if you guys have certain similar stories and things that you believe in particularly that your family or friends might have, we would love to hear them down below. Thank you so much for watching and remember to check out Bright Sellers and cheers for the holidays!